Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making a Nando's platter and I'm doing a comparison with the Ninja Foodie and the oven. So this isn't an official recipe, this is my take on it and I wanted to show you a, a new recipe idea using the Ninja. So you can see the Ninja in the background, it's a multi-cooker. I'll be bringing a video reviewing that as well really soon. So far I'm really happy with it. Now. I don't want to get my big food processor out, so I tried to blend everything in this small um, Nutribullet bullet. So what I did was, I had to do it in batches, so first I um, blended together the red and yellow peppers. I did two of each, so I had to do half in one batch, blend it, and then do more in the next batch. And then the next batch I added in a few other things as well to blend. So in this batch I added in loads of onions and you can see I've just kept the skin on because they're going to blend anyway and it saves me one less thing to do and you don't taste it and I've added in uh, red onions. Now I've tried to blend in some lemon juice there but I'll do that later as well and here are all the spices that I've put in. I've listed them here as well so paprika, black pepper, red chilli, oregano, thyme, garlic powder, you know I've listed it all there. Um, it's standard stuff that most people normally have in their house. If you don't have something, you know, you can substitute it with something else or just use what ingredients you have or sometimes people use their ready-made peri marinade, which works too, but I think this tastes so much nicer. It's worth putting the effort in and putting all these ingredients in. It's so much better than store-bought sauces and you can see exactly what's going in. Now here I've put in, I could not be bothered zesting a lemon so I just did the peel, put the peel in and I blended it. So I was starting to add in the oil but the cup was getting too big so I had to take some out and then add in oil. Um, so you can see I've reserved a little bit for some perinase and some sauce to dip into because it's really really tasty sauce if you're a subscriber you'll see that I've made this loads of times so you can see here and um, because I couldn't fit it into the Nutribula I just had to squeeze in some lemon juice here um, this is quite important you need something acidic to react with the oil so either vinegar white wine vi white wine vinegar or lemon juice now I got loads of pieces this is about three kilos of chicken legs with the skin on. I think it's really important to have the skin on. It keeps the chicken underneath really moist and when it cooks the skin crisps up a little bit and it makes it really nice. Now on this day I made this as soon as I finished work and I was making a batch for my parents as well so I didn't have time to marinate it but ideally if you're going to make it I would recommend if you make this marinade the night before and then put all your chicken in uh, into it and leave it if you want to leave it overnight or at least two hours. The thing is it still tasted really nice when I made it and my family really loved it as well. Um, so you can see here I'm squashing all the lemon, all the legs sorry on into this bowl and then what I did was I put in quite a few into this tray. The majority was going to my family's house and I kept a little bit for us and the remaining chicken I used the air fryer for. So you can see here, Marshall, I tried to make quite a decent amount so that there was enough for everybody in my mum and dad's house. So I just layered all of the chicken and you can see I'm just putting some more of the marinade on top as well and just try to find an empty space for more of the chicken legs. I guess using the oven you can make more portions of something but overall it takes so much time it takes so much more time making it in the oven um, compared to the air fryer. You can get different sized air fryers, but this one suits my family, uh, the size that I've got. Now, when I filled up the tray, I just covered it with uh, some slices of lemon, um, some butter, and this was to make the skin crisp, um, keep it crisp and um, keep the meat inside quite moist. So what I did was really tightly wrap it up in foil for it to cook so I started that off at one hour at 180 and the rest of the chicken is going to go into the ninja so I've not stacked it on top of each other I wanted every piece of chicken to be cooked evenly so I've just made one layer of chicken on this tray 
uh, this rack that's in the air, air fryer is the crisping rack and the setting is going to be crisping so we want it to be cooked all the way around and the heat to go all over the chicken and underneath as well so you can see I've put some more of the marinade on and I've just left a little bit for us to brush or baste during cooking and again just topped it with some lemon and lemon slices and some oh I, I did this off camera so I put some butter on well you can see how much I love this ninja because I'm cleaning it as I'm cooking I don't want it to get dirty I really I'm really really happy with this I would 100% recommend this um, and you can see for I started off at 30 minutes at 200 degrees on the air crisp setting so while the chicken was cooking I sat it on the sides and you need a potato peeler and a knife I've used my new marble Russell Hobbs um, which I'll link below and now you can use whatever side you want I'm starting off with the mash you can use whatever sides you like um, the mash is my favourite and you can see I've prepared some corn in the cob carrots not something you would typically get there but I wanted it as a side. Now you can see it looks a little bit burnt and I was a little bit worried at first but um, I think it's just the way that it cooks it. It looks as if it's burnt but it's just it was absolutely fine. You can see here I turned it over and then I just covered it, brushed on some sauce just to keep it nice and moist and to keep the flavour in there. So that was after 40 minutes and it was nearly cooked and then I took out the oven um, baked chicken after 45 minutes. You'll be able to see here the heat hasn't even touched the chicken yet so what I did was put it on full put it on high I'm always worried about it drying out when I put it in the oven and you can see this so before I opened up at 30 minutes and this is a, f a full 40 minutes and it was cooked perfectly and it was crispy the skin was crisp it was cooked all the way through and the main thing is it was moist now I just quickly rinsed the air fryer out I didn't really properly clean it because it was hot and I'm trying to make everything I'm trying to challenge myself self and show you that you can make everything like a platter like this different settings different dishes all in the air fryer so what I did was put in 250 ml of water and the chopped potatoes and I put on the pressure cooker lid onto the air fryer or ninja I should say and I just put it on to high for six minutes and let it do its thing. So you can see all the pressure builds and then the steam escapes and we just need to vent it out and let the extra air come out and you can see I'm just checking the potatoes, they're perfectly cooked, each and every single one of them were perfectly cooked so because I needed to make more sides I took everything out and put it into a pot. Now this pot I put it into, I actually underestimated that I actually picked a really small pot so you'll see that midway through when I'm making the mash I changed the pot. So all you need to do is take everything out of the air fryer and you can see it's really hot, beautifully cooked. And you start off with adding a generous amount of butter, I added in about 300 grams. And then you'll see I had to change the pot, so I got a bigger pot and I added in a lot of black pepper and added a generous amount of salt. Um, I don't normally put a lot of salt in my food but for these mashed potatoes you need a, a decent amount and the butter I use as well salted so I wouldn't normally add that much in but it adds to the flavour and I've added in a big splash of milk and what I did was just because it was so hot I just covered it with the lid let everything can incorporate before I mash it. Now I didn't have time to clean the ninja so I put the sweet corn and I put the uh, carrots in. Now obviously 
Nando's have their own sides and you could certainly stick with what they have but I had to use what I had and it's hard going out during these times I had to try and make the best of um, what I had and you can see here I'm cleaning the ninja again <laughs> I love this thing it's really good I very much recommend it I'll be showing in the coming weeks other recipes um, that you can use with the ninja and you can see here I've mashed um, the potatoes together and they've went out really they've turned really smooth and you can see here now this is the oven baked chicken after an hour it's cooked but it's not crispy so I had to just uncover it from the foil and then cook it for another about 30 minutes Um I didn't change the side or anything like that which probably would have been good but I had so many things I was doing this day um, that I just had to manage the best I can so this is um, the sweet corn and the carrots and the ninja foodie that I I must have knocked the camera out so you can't really see it very well so just midway through it was a 15 minute cooking time on air crisp setting and I had to turn uh, the sweet corn and everything over the carrots were still really hard so I'd actually wish I had maybe steamed or pressure cooked them first so that's a lesson learned and then that's it guys, I just served it up, so there's a chicken from the air fryer, this is my mum and dad's chicken and I just garnished it with spring onions and red onions and this is the platter I was sending them, so it was this platter and the chicken and then the one that was on the table it was for us, so this was the end result, so this is my take on Nando's, it smelled beautiful, I highly recommend it and I think you would really love it, so you need to get this in your life guys. Thank you.